Hello everybody, my name is Helver Wesley. I'm the creator of Asteroid Dig, Atomic Trail, and recently in and out Night Burglar, a game jam game made in seven days. It received 41st place overall and 20th place in the fun category out of 468 games. Today though, because of a suggestion from somebody who was talking to me earlier on Discord, um, I'll be doing a video on my workflow, which people seem to want to know about, which is kind of cool, honestly. Um, I'm going to go over the equipment, equipment I use, the uh, applications I use, and how I use them, some examples of things I've made, and then my overall flow into making a game, basically. Starting with the workspace, image on screen, now. Okay. <laughs> Uh, firstly, you'll notice the giant mug of coffee. It's a Christmas mug, but that's only because that's all I have that's that size. You'll also see my giant stack of notepads. That's just a few of them. I didn't want to put all of them in frame because honestly, I thought that was embarrassing. I jot note everything. I have stacks upon stacks of jot notes and um, no sketches really because I'm terrible at sketching. Usually it's just dimension, rough dimension sketches for UI. Uh, otherwise, I do all my drawing on the computer, but most of it is just jot notes and uh, numbers and so on of things being done in my games. Uh, you'll see my laptop, which is the laptop I use to make video games, and it is a four, maybe five year old laptop now. And it's just, it's doing its best. It's doing the best it can. I love it. I will replace it one day, but for now it's doing its job, so that's all that matters. The headphones, again, same thing, need to be replaced. Um, they're two years old now. They're wonderful. They do a great job. I've made some really great audio using them, like wearing them and being able to like pick out the little sounds and it's it's very nice. But at this point they've started to break. Um, you can, I'll show a picture of the super glue on the headphones. Yeah, both sides of the headphones have cracked off at this point and they're being held together with super glue. So that's a thing. <laughs> the microphone I use is the blue snowball. It was very cheap. It wasn't the cheapest microphone, obviously, there, but it was not expensive enough that I was afraid to pick it up for, for giggles. I picked it up originally for podcasts I was doing, ones that are no longer on the internet, but I did them for a while. And now I use it for making sound effects in my video games and doing these devlogs. Moving on to the apps that I use, I do all, okay, before I get started here, I wanna say that I do all of my dev work for free. I know most people think that you need to buy these programs and buy the advanced version of Unity or, or buy other engines or applications or Photoshop or some kind of sound program, mixing boards. And to make video games costs money, but genuinely I do all of my development for free and that's why my games are for free right now. I do hope to make something that I can sell at some point, but for now they're just free. It's all about learning right now. So to show off the applications I use, the first one of course being GDevelop, which is the engine I use to make my video games. It's a more or less no code option, so I don't have to do it, learn any coding. I can just go in and literally tell it exactly what I want things to do. And its interface is, for the most part, drag and drop with uh, events, with conditions and actions happening in the background. I tried other things like Unity and uh, some other free tools that were garbage. Uh, <laughs> um, but ultimately I came down to using GDevelop just because it is, uh, it's simple to use, it's very straightforward, and it's very, it's really good for people who are visual learners. So for me, I'm a, I'm a very visual kind of person. So being able to see the things happening and see the, see the events in the, the order that they're happening in is just really helpful for me. So I stick with GDevelop. Next for sound, I use Audacity, which is free and super easy. And like everybody should have Audacity downloaded on their computer just to do simple little things like fix audio here and there or anything like that at all. No matter what level you're at, I find Audacity is a really great tool to just go in and tweak little things here and there. For my artwork, I use GIMP, which is basically free Photoshop. That's it. It's just basically free Photoshop. Most of the music I've made for my games has been from BandLab. BandLab is what I've been playing with recently. It's again free and the MIDI tools in there and the loops that you can get from for free on the program are just great. Any trouble I have with making music is purely based on my own skill, not because of the program itself. I'll show some examples of music I've made from using BandLab and Audacity to tweak things now.
next program I've used to make music, which is as as silly as it sounds, the next program I used was Chrome Music Lab, <laughs> which is a browser-based Chrome extension that allows you to just make music using a very simple interface that is genuinely just silly. And I, I know it's I shouldn't have been using it because there are so many better options, but I did. And here are some examples of music. The last and final program I've started to use now for music is uh, Beatbox. It's again free and actually pretty good for what I've been using it for. Um, I haven't created any, any music with it yet for my video games, but I've been playing with it and I think I will be using it in the future. Moving on to sound effects, um, I've made a lot of my video gamey sound effects with SFXR. It's a program created specifically to create gamey sound effects. It, you can use the, uh, a randomizer to generate random sounds or go in and hand tweak sounds. And uh, it's, it's pretty great for most basic game sounds like jumping and shooting and, and helicopters. And I'll give some examples here now. And then of course the last thing I've used to make sound effects in my games are just the environment and my own mouth. Which again probably sounds really basic, but it does what I need it to do. I have made some great wind sound effects and scuttering uh, animals and oh I made this really great water sound effect that I forgot to add to the recording. I'll throw it in there now. And then some other sound effects I made using my mouth and things around the house are these. And that's it for this video. I will come back again soon with another video about the process I take to get my games from paper to a game itself and then on to marketing. I hope this was enjoyable to watch. I hope that you got something from it and if you didn't I hope you at least had a fun time. If you haven't done it yet please subscribe to the channel. I am going to upload a video whenever I have content. Um, if you want to come out and hang out with me in the discord the link is down below and if you do that I'll see you there.